Anyway, during Ray's visit, he observed that the rights and responsibilities were displayed in all classrooms and that the students he interviewed knew about the right to learn and the right to be safe. But Raymond pointed out that we mostly used our legitimate power because our students were generally well behaved and followed the teacher's instructions. So this meant that the teachers were not giving reasons for their demands. He found that teachers were using hints, but that the hints were mostly aimed at individual students. So the major recommendation that came from Raymond's visit was that we promote communal responsibility and concentrate on making visual signs for the more challenging students. We decided to use our teaching and learning meetings to agree as a whole staff on the ways we were going to promote communal responsibility right across the school. Our weekly assembly wards, they all changed and they were all given for communal responsibility. This was after the teachers explained to the students the types of behaviour that they would be looking for. And you can see an example of some of the reasons there. They're, they're just a few. Most classrooms appointed table leaders during class working sessions and their task was to keep everyone focused and provide any assistance that might be needed while the teacher was with another group doing explicit teaching. The table leaders change frequently so that everyone gets a turn. And the table leaders operate even down to the prep grades. The prep children take their role very seriously. They make sure they keep everybody at the table on task. But at the end of the day, I was talking to one little prep girl one day, and she said to me, oh, you know, Mary got the award for being the best worker at the table at the end of the day, and I had to keep stopping her from talking. All she did was talk all day, but she got the award. And I said, well, you know, maybe she put a lot of effort into getting that award. And the answer was, well, I put a lot of effort into keeping her quiet. <laughs> so we pr try to promote communal responsibility, but it is very hard for the little ones because they're still, they're the most important person in their life still. Okay, so at the end of the, t at the, end of the day now, when we have a CRT, um, we usually survey the CRT informally. We've yet to do it formally and that's something that we will implement. We use the behaviour that the children exhibit when a CRT is in the room. We use that to measure how well our strategies, strategies are working as far as communal responsibility goes because they will act up. Um, as you know, the CRT walks in and they think, oh, well, here we go. Um, but we have noticed now that CRTs actually do say at the end of the day, no, they're a lovely grade and we'd like to come back. So that's made a big change. Anyway, after a few weeks, many teachers were implementing different ways of choosing the students who got the award winner at Monday morning assembly. And I'll just hand over to Viv to explain that. In the one, two area, we um, in introduced a, a nomination voting form for the one, two students to select someone that they thought was behaving or doing the right thing. It was to make to make sure that those students were becoming more aware of, of what others were doing and, and encouraging their, making them more aware of their positive behaviours that were taking place. So the one twos had a, a voting system in place. Um, other grade areas had other systems in place. Um, and I've got a video here of a grade six student explaining their process. I apologise for the quality of the video because it was done on the the laptop and I thought it was better than it actually is. So get over the quality and, and um, hear what uh, Thomas has to say. After Thomas is a, another student being interviewed about um, what he, the differences he believed were between personal responsibility and communal responsibility. Because we've been trying really hard to focus on the communal responsibility in the last two terms. So here we go, let's, fingers crossed. Can you tell me how your client chooses who gets that award? But I know once there's a girl like I Sandy and my netbook ran out of battery and there was no charger, so she went to hers and I put her in the car bed. The next Monday she got an award. So it's kind of like our class gets the vote, but it's anonymous, so you don't tell anyone if they know you. Some people do, but that's not everyone does. And I don't think it's fresh because some people do. 
Because it's supposed to be a non just say, like, you don't know who's put your name in the box. And then you have to write the name and the reason on the paper and put it in the box and she will go through it and find why and the best reasons and yeah. Normally, sometimes for a week, I would make sure every room is packed up, that's my area, that's just my room. I would sometimes go to others, make sure that's done properly, done the right way. I, would, I used to do that. Um, I stopped now because there's people looking for me. <laughs> Jaden, 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 it's Jaden. So I think that you're the next one. I think you're in here. Okay, this is um, this is one of the displays that we captured up in the five six unit. Um, the unit worked together at the beginning of the year in the first two weeks to create a team spirit in their own particular learning area. And this is their their little catch cry for this year is count me in. Um, they're very good at doing this in the 5-6 area. Last year it was um, be a participant, not a passenger. Um, our we're very proud of our 5-6 students in, in their team spirit, which is great. Now we need to just make it flow over into communal responsibility. Oh, and the following slide is um, in the 1-2 in the area this year we were we had 60 children and it was the first year that an open plan learning environment was introduced. And so we were struggling a little bit at the start of the year and the students were struggling a little bit at the start of the year because there were 60 children going everywhere in every direction at some stages. So we um, introduced some flow charts. And this is just one example, it's probably not the best, but it's a flow chart just to explain the procedures that needed to take place when the children were coming into school, when they were swapping over from writing to reading sessions to um, putting their bags in their bag area and things like that. And I think it just helped the children become more aware of the personal safety aspects that needed to take place and become more aware of what's going on. And I, th I think it helped and hopefully it will help us moving into our new space next year which will be open plan as well. I'm not sure what the next one is. I can't move up. Is it? Oh yes, it's a video. I'll just explain it first, sorry. Um, here's another video. As I said, we were talking in the one, two area particularly, we've been really trying to concentrate on the communal responsibility with the children. Sometimes it's been a bit hard for them to grasp what it actually is. Um, but I, th I, think, I think we're doing a good job and they're becoming a bit more aware, aware of what is involved to be communally responsible. As you will see from the video, some, some answers have got it, some not so much, but... Um, Again, the quality is not the best, and the first two are very, very quiet, so we'll see how it goes. 